Good morning, Wake Up HCC. Cris Oviedo here with you. Uh, we're going to have a great conversation with Stephanie Anderson. She's the executive director of the Heating and Air Conditioning Contractors of Maryland. And Adrian Summers, she, I, know, I know you've seen her before. She's a um, friend of the station. She works at Howard Community College, and she's the director of apprenticeships and workforce innovation there. And we're going to talk about, you know, I said new opportunities. And why do I say that is because apprenticeships for me, are new opportunities. They, they you know, I, I have to be honest, this is something that I only knew that maybe somebody who was not going for formal education went to a business and said, I want you to teach me everything about, you know, the way that you do things. And somebody would say, okay, and take them under their wing and just show them. But it wasn't a formal education. It wasn't really this opportunity to go to school, to get paid, to get the uh, experience right there on the job. Um, and that's super exciting to me. So I thank you both so much for joining me this morning and for creating these opportunities through Harry Community College for students, for career changers, uh, for people who are just looking for, you know, to further the, their careers and look for maybe new opportunities um, and just keep moving forward in life. So. Um, Adrian, we've met you before. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate. I guess I can just ask, you know, start by asking you how you're doing and, and what are you looking forward to in this, this spring, summer season 2021? Again, I, I thank you for bringing us on for another uh, segment of the show. So it's really great to be able to share about apprenticeship. As you know, Howard Community College has grown tremendously. And ironically, we're here to talk about um, you know, HVAC today. That was our very first apprenticeship that Howard Community College started with back in 2018 when we had our very first class. And here we are at the beginning of 2021 and Howard Community College now has 10 occupations and growing. We have another one that is slated to be approved very soon. And we're looking at still one or two additional opportunities before the end of the year. Very exciting times, you know, and very appropriate. I mean, growing, changing, moving forward, you know, perfect, perfect for April 1st. Stephanie, welcome. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate right before we went live, um, you said, I really appreciate the opportunity of, of sharing about the program. Well, we appreciate that you're taking the time to do this. Um, we appreciate that you are creating this partnership with Howard Community College because really, you know, maybe HCC would want to do apprenticeships, but if it wasn't for the partners like you guys, then we would not be able to offer this to our students. So tell us a little bit about yourself before we dive into everything that, you know, apprenticeships are and this opportunity, this wonderful opportunity that we offer. Um, I always like to get to meet my guests a little bit better. Uh, so if you can just tell us a little bit about who you are, about yourself and about um, the heating and air conditioning contractors of Maryland. Welcome and good morning. Sure. Again, thank you very much for having us here. It's always exciting for me to have an opportunity to talk apprenticeship. I, I love it. I have a passion for it and I, I want everyone to know about it because a lot of people don't know about the opportunities. Um, so my name is Stephanie Anderson. I am the executive director for the Heating and Air Conditioning Contractors of Maryland. And we are a trades association that supports um, contractors and vendors that support contractors in the Baltimore um, Beltway. Uh, we cover most of the state. Um, we have about 140 contractor members and then all of their employees that um, are actively engaged with the association. Um, and um, just a little bit about me, you know, I've, I've been doing this now for probably about 10, 12 years. And um, probably my favorite part, I do different things for the association, but I would say definitely this education component and, and the apprenticeship is my favorite piece because you really see the impact that you can have on, on people's lives. And, and um, so I love it. I love everything about it. But thanks again for having us here. I love that you talked about impact because, you know, that's really at the end of the day, the purpose of all of this, um, all of these programs that HCC offers and all of the classes really. Um, education, I think we many times can get into this idea that it's just about going and learning and it's just a curricular thing and, and that's it. 
But through HEC and my experience and programs like this, you realize that it's really more than that. It's really looking at the individual. It's really looking at that person, where they want to go, and, and facilitating that through opportunities like the apprenticeships. Um, Adrian, if somebody, you know, I know we've defined before what an apprenticeship is. I know we have talked in depth about that. But if somebody still came to you and said, why should I consider doing an apprenticeship, right? Um, why, why should I think of this opportunity as the way to farther my career? What would you tell them? Well, for any apprenticeship, it's the opportunity to earn and learn. It's also the opportunity to receive that on-the-job training on pairing it with your coursework, your related instruction. So it's you're setting yourself up for a career because at the end of an apprenticeship, you remain the employee of the company that you're working for. Um, a lot of companies do have some tuition reimbursements. There's potential of opportunities where they're going to reimburse the students for the coursework that they are paying for. Some employers may have um, more robust opportunities. It just depends. So here is an opportunity where you're going to earn, learn, work on the job, have the on-the-job training. And truly at the end, you have typically very little college debt at the end. So it's a fabulous opportunity. You have your career, you're set. Stephanie, from your perspective um, as, an as an employer, why does it make sense to offer these apprenticeships, you know, as an employer? I mean, because you, you could hire, you could just go in and post a job opening and hire somebody and you don't have to partner with an institution and you don't have to go through that process of the educational piece. I mean, it sounds like it's, if I was an employer, I think I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a couple extra steps that I have to take here, right? So, but here you are, you guys are doing it and you guys, you're taking the time to come and have this conversation this morning and you're saying, we want to get this information and we want people to do this. Why as an employer, why, why does it make sense for employers to run into and jump into this wagon of offering apprenticeships? So I think you kind of hit, hit the nail on the head with one of the things you said is, so we founded our, started our apprenticeship program in 1970, actually. I'm sorry, no, we were founded in 1970. We started in 1996. And the reason we started it is because as we're, we are helping contractors, the number one concern that my members came to me with is that they couldn't find qualified help. So they couldn't just put an ad out there and find candidates because the people just weren't there. So by creating this program, it, it essentially created a pipeline of, of people that are committed to the trade, committed to learning, and that really want to be engaged. And then on the flip side, if people did have employees that needed training, it also provided an avenue for them. So um, really, and still today, even though we started this in 1996, it's still the number one concern. Um, the, the Labor Bureau statistics is anticipating that our, it's around 55% of our workforce is, is slated to retire in the next six, six years. Can you imagine that? I mean, that is a lot of our workforce that is gonna be retiring. There was. There was a period of time where people didn't understand the value of trades. And I think people, you know, didn't look at it as a career opportunity. They looked at more traditional avenues and that's kind of, and because of that, we have a gap of, you know, 10 years that people weren't getting trained. So the people that can come in and get trained now, it's like sky's the limit. So really that demand, that, that need for good employer, employees is what kind of drove the program. And I really appreciate that because it shows what a perfect match this is, right? It's like, there's a need, there's careers out there, there's job opportunities, yeah. but we need the right people for them. And so when you, when you look at a college student, when you look at somebody who is in college and, and, and that's been, I think also from the flip side, right? From the students and Adrian, maybe you can talk about this. It's like, okay, well, I want to go and I want to get my career in um, you know, as an electrician, maybe or something. And they're like, but I know that once I graduate, after I complete all my courses, then they're going to require all of this experience, <laughs> right? When I go and apply for a job. And it's like, I don't have that experience because I've been in school learning all of these things, right? So Adrian, 
taking in consideration what Stephanie just said about, you know, the qualified individuals, the prepared individuals, plus that, you know, that, that concern that we've heard from our students, where it's like, well, once I graduate, they're going to ask me for all this experience, and I don't know where to get that from, right? Um, Talk to us about, you know, that bridge that apprenticeships form to combine and, and those two concerns that are, you know, on either side and bring that together and, and facilitate that. So with apprenticeship, the student is working full time and typically they're going to school part time uh, with the heating and air conditioning uh, courses. They go to HCC two evenings per week. Actually, it's one night at HCC. And. HACC has their uh, beautiful lab facility. So they actually attend the lab facility uh, one night a week. So two nights a week, they're going to school, working full time, um, having the mentor that is, and a mentor, again, we've talked about this before, but a mentor is someone from the company who actually assists that apprentice, both with learning how to do the various tasks with the culture of the company, and for many other, it's a go-to. It's, it's someone that is there to assist them be successful. So the mentor is someone that's going to help the apprentice. Um, there's just, there's just so many opportunities for that career development. And I, one of the really cool things that I like about the HVAC apprenticeship is at the end of the four-year program, because this is a four-year program where they're working four years for an employer, and um, also receiving um, the hours working full-time for the four years that they're in the program. But at the end of four years, our students actually earn or are, are awarded their Maryland Journeyman license. So here they are set up for you know, employment, a career, the opportunity, and to go forward once they're finished the apprenticeship program. And I hope I got all that right, Stephanie, is that correct? Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about that, um, that license at the end and the importance of being able to obtain it, you know, at the end of your apprenticeship. Um, Stephanie, I don't know if maybe you want to talk yeah. about that. Absolutely. So um, normally in the state of Maryland to get a license, the process is to hold an apprentice license for three years and to work under a master license holder in the field, then apply to take a test and then kind of take a, a laborious test. Um, which is challenging. Um, one of the great things about our program is because we are governed by the Department of Labor and they audit us and they monitor us and they kind of have helped set the standards for our program, our students at the end of the program, they don't have to take that laborious test. We actually give them the license. So by meeting the four years of schooling or three years actually, because the students have an opportunity to take a skip test if they have experience and start in year two of the program, um, and then working in the field for 8,000 on the job training hours, the Department of Labor says that meets our qualifications. We are gonna let you give your students your license. So that, that's a huge thing. Um, going into this trade, you need to have your license to be able to be alone in a truck and work in the industry. So by, um, by going through our program, it's a three-year process, a minimum either way. Um, but then they're guaranteed that license because of of the work they put in. So let me ask you, Stephanie, right? So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so student comes and is like, okay, so it's three years, I'm gonna be dedicated this time to studying and working. Um, what happens after that? You, you know, maybe they're asking, okay, so I finish my apprenticeship, I finish my time with the company, and then I have my license, but I still need to work, right? Is there, you know, it, is this like a cut? kind of thing, right? Like, a, like a, for instance, when you go to school, you know that when you complete your courses and you graduate, you're done, right? Is that same idea here for an apprenticeship where you go and you do your courses, you work with your employer, and then at the end of the apprenticeship, you're done and then you just have your license and you start looking for jobs? Or is this more of a long-term relationship? Is this something yeah. where you want to keep those students because you know they're qualified, you've invested in them, right? And then they've, yeah. they've invested in you. So there's probably a relationship there between the employer and the student, I would think. Absolutely. So, um, you know, the, the requirements of our program is, you know, we prefer our students to start in year one working but they have to be working in the trade before they can come back to year two. 
And our goal is for them to have a lifeline, you know, a lifetime partnership with these employers. Um, these companies are investing with them. Um, mm -hmm. One interesting th thing about our program is we have the largest demographic of 18 to 24 year olds. So we do have a lot of change of careers. I mean, this year I have students from the age of 18 to 50. So it does go across the board. Um, but we do have a lot of people that are entering the workforce for the first time. So these companies are willing to take someone who, if it's change of career or if they're young, you know, and new and teach them everything. So they really are investing in them. A lot of them are paying for their tuition. So I think the goal and the hope is that they stay with that company. And, you know, it doesn't always happen that way and that's fine. But the great thing about this apprenticeship model is that when you're done and you have your license, you also, you have that job, that those, that job, you get a, a bump in your um, pay because you now have your license and our standards require for there to be step increases throughout the program. Um, so now you have this employer that's trained you, that's worked with you. Um, and, and most of our students stay with those companies, really stay with them for a while because they appreciate that, that they've invested the time in them and they've, they've taken the time to work with them. So it, it's great for both, you know, the employer and the employee. Stephanie, help us help us get a picture, right? Because maybe somebody's saying, okay, sounds good. But maybe when I come to the employer, right? Maybe I, I get the job, maybe I'm, I'm doing the apprenticeship program. But many times we hear, right? Especially when we think about um, volunteering opportunities and things like that. It's like, well, I'm just going to be bringing coffee and I'm just going to be kind of like watching, you know, behind the window, what's happening there. Um, help us get an idea of what students are doing when they come um, to these apprenticeship opportunities and they're actually there hired by an employer. Yeah. So that's one of the great things about the apprenticeship model versus just starting at a company as like a helper. Apprenticeship is kind of, you know, a lot of them are viewed in, and at the kind of at the pay level of a helper. However, all of the employers that agree to have our students, they have to sign our standards and our standards require that the students are learning and actively engaged. So the expectation is not that you're just going to put this helper in a, in a truck and send them to the distributor, you know, 10 times a day, getting parts and jobs that they don't need. You know, the expectation is that you're actually going to be teaching them the craft. Um, they, they sign a contract with us. They sign a contract that gets, you know, um, ratified by the Department of Labor. So they are committed to teaching them the trade and not kind of just having them stock the truck at the shop, you know, because it's a true apprenticeship versus being hired as a helper where you're not guaranteed to necessarily, maybe you will, depending on the company, but you're, there's not that promise and that guarantee that you're actually going to be, you know, taught the trade. Adrian, talk to us a little bit about that educational piece with that experience, right? Um, you know, what are you seeing with students? And I know this is a fairly new program at Howard Community College, but we've been doing this for a little bit already. And, and I've heard firsthand from some of these students uh, through some of the interviews that we've done in the past. And I invite, invite everybody who's watching and listening, if apprenticeship is something that you're interested in, um, watch the very first interview that we did where we actually, um, it was a construction management um, apprenticeship and we had a student and he was right there <laughs> at the site. So if you wanna hear about the students uh, experience firsthand, go back and, and you know visit our, our videos on our Facebook page and, and you'll hear from him directly what he was doing and, and his experience. But since we don't have a student in this conversation today, Adrian, can you, can you help us kind of like understand what it has meant for our students, you know, the, the experiences and that combination of the classroom plus the real world experience coming together through the apprenticeships? So Stephanie might be the better person to answer this question, but again, they come to HCC, um, they go through, um, 168 hours of related instruction. Uh, so they're, they're receiving information from an instructor that they can then turn around and utilize on the job. So they can have that reinforcement with actually practicing what they're learning um, at their employer. So that's, that is so valuable to these students because they're not sitting in a classroom, you know, listening to a lecture for four years they're literally able to practice what they're learning from both the lecture and in a lab portion because there is a hands-on component that is part of the instruction 
that again, they can practice that at the place of employment. So that is so valuable to these students and it really helps reinforce. And that is why they're successful and they can earn their Maryland journeyman license at the end. So that's, that's tremendous for these students. It's an opportunity. Stephanie, what have you heard from the students, you know, um, as they are taking their classes and then they're coming and basically either applying what they just learned, um, you know, the night before or learning maybe new things and like, oh, wait, I haven't seen this in class yet. Maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ahead here through my job. It's, you know, what are some of the experiences that, that some of the students uh, have shared with you? Sure. Yeah. And I'd also like to add, you know, in addition to all the experience they get in the field, one of the great things about doing an apprentice model, you know, through Howard Community College and HACC is that we have a lab. Um, we have a beautiful lab that we open. Um, we just opened it. We had our grand opening like a month before the pandemic <laughs> happened. So we haven't utilized it as much as we like, but um, the hands-on lab is great because it gives the students a chance to get in there, tear equipment up, try things out while they're in a controlled setting versus in a, in a customer's house. Um, so I think it helps to give them a little bit more confidence. So that, that's definitely one thing I hear from the students is that they get to learn about things and they get to try them in the lab. They get to work alongside a mentor in the field and, and learn. So it helps to really build them that confidence so that when they have their license, they can go on a truck, they can go and do this. And, and, and that's important to, to kind of have that confidence in the trade and in your ability to be able to troubleshoot because one of the great things about the HVAC field is that, you know, for people that like to be out and about and for people who like to work with their hands, it's different every day. You get to a customer's house or you get to a commercial job, you don't know what is going to be thrown in front of you. So our students love the fact that, that they really get to experience so many different things, that they're really prepared um, and have that confidence going into their career um, from putting the time into a program like ours. Adrian, let's talk about the process. You know, if somebody's listening and they're like, okay, this sounds great. I, I really would like to explore the idea. How do I get started, right? How do I get started? Where do, we, do I apply? Um, what's this process like? So the application actually opens June 1st, correct, Stephanie? Well, I, I have two exciting announcements, and one of them is that we decided to open the application next week because we've had so much interest. <laughs> um, so we, we will be live next week. Um, students can go to our website to apply, which um, is www.h as in Harry, a as in apple, c as in charlie, c as in charlie, md.org. Um, and on the apprenticeship page, um, the second drop down says apprentice application. Um, we've been getting so many students that have been, been inquiring about it that we just decided, you know what, let's open the applications now, um, let people have more time, you know, to fill. And, and then an, another big announcement, I hope it's okay if I share this now, um, we haven't actually done our official press release, so it's kind of hot off the press here. Um, but HACC was just awarded $88,000 grant from the Department of Labor. And um, this grant money is basically designated to serve two distinct populations. Um, half of the graph, grant money is for our students that are a year out of high school. So just kind of coming out of high school that are interested in learning the trade. Um, COVID has kind of changed kind of the playing field for a lot of people. Um, financially and also with, you know, their, their comfort level and maybe traveling out of state or doing a, a program more local. So um, we can sponsor um, about 20 students to start the program that are in that group. And then our other um, group that we can help is kind of underserved populations. So we have that money for um, females. We need to engage more females in the trade for minorities, um, for veterans, um, for people that have disabilities. So um, that's kind of the other segment that that grants for. And, you know, last year at, at with our Howard County students alone, we had at the end about seven students that really wanted to do the program and just couldn't put the funding together. And because they started kind of late in the process, they we weren't able to like kind of get them connected with an employer in time to have an employer pay. So I'm just, I'm so excited about, this is our first grant actually that our association's ever had. So I'm so excited about, um, 
the prospects this year. And, and that's part of why we open the application. So sorry, I hadn't told you that, Adrian. It's actually <laughs> on my list of emails to do um, to do our formal press release. Um, so so, but um, but yeah, so we're, we're we'll be live and eager to get people start applying and and being able to offer grant opportunities. So can you that's tell us? The date? Yeah, that's super exciting. Can you tell us the date when people uh, can start applying so that they can and where they can go to start that application process through you guys? Yep. So it's right on our website. And when they go on the apprentice um, tab, which is when you open our homepage, right in the middle of the screen, it says apprenticeship. And when you click on that button, there's a menu that has five options on it. And the second option is apprentice application. Um, applications will be ali alive on April 5th. And I will say this is not an April Fool's joke. We are really going live on Monday and we did really earn this grant. Um, so, but yeah, so Monday that'll be set up and, and ready to go. So I'm eager to start getting applications. And what we'll do uh, from Howard Community College standpoint is we will have a link on our website of apprenticeship. We will have a link directly to their application process. Um, their application process is a little bit different than Howard Community College. Uh, what we do is once the students have been accepted into the program, which that is done through Stephanie and her team at Heating and Air Conditioning Contractors of Maryland, then the students will complete a registration form uh, near when the classes start. So the classes will begin uh, in September. Mm -hmm. um, but again, this is a fabulous opportunity for students, especially the underserved students, to have this great opportunity to, to earn while they're going to school. Um, and I will note also for additional funding, uh, students can also visit the Columbia Workforce Services Office. Uh, they will also be able to potentially assist with funding opportunities for the year one of an apprenticeship in the um, heating and air conditioning so Stephanie, talk to us a little bit about this process, right? Somebody who might be listening and watching right now is like, okay, Monday comes around April 5th. I click on the link. What do I need? What do I need to have? What can I expect? Am I going to fill out an application? Am I going to be called for an interview? You know, what's this process like? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the application itself is online. We kind of streamlined everything. So um, there's several questions that it will ask you to fill out. And then in addition, on the page, it gives you a list of items that you need to submit with your application. So you can upload it as a PDF um, when you apply, um, which is, is our preferred method. However, if you have a problem or are not able to scan it, we can take those documents by mail um, or email after the fact if there's something you're waiting on. But the documents you need is a couple, copy of your high school diploma or GED. Um, we need three recommendation letters on people recommending you for the program. So with these letters, we ask that you only use like one friend or family member, um, but the rest of the letters should come from either um, your, your current teachers. Um, if you are currently working, it could be a coworker or supervisor. Um, if you're on a sports team, it could be a coach. If you do volunteer work, it could be someone who supervises you. Um, so, um, so those three recommendation letters. Let me let me let me stop you right there and ask you a little bit more because I think that that's one of those great areas sometimes that like, people get stuck and and kind of like stop right there because like, well, are you asking for recommendations about me as a person? Are you looking for recommendations as me and and maybe previous experience that I've had with you know a trait like this? So I think it's important to clarify because I know I remember um, filling out applications for, you know, for grants and things like that through school. And there were a couple of things where it asked me questions like that. And I was like, I don't know what you're asking for. And I don't know what recommendations you're looking for. <laughs> so can, can we clarify that a little bit of what is it that you're looking for in those recommendations letters so that people can really hone in and, and, and identify who the right people would be to fill out those recommendations for them? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the goal of the recommendation is for our organization to learn a little bit more about the candidate from the letter and also why someone thinks they would be a good fit for the program. So, you know, someone who knows that they're responsible or, you know, that they've applied themselves in a work setting, a team setting or school setting. Um, 
So really talking a little bit to, to the, who the person is and, and, and why that person writing the letter thinks that they would be a great fit to continue on and to get involved in the trade and to commit to a four-year school program. Um, Perfect. Thanks for clarifying that because yep. it's important for people to know what you guys are looking for so that they can give you and get that better chance of getting accepted into this, this exciting program. Yeah. So you have the recommendation letter, you click on the application, what else do they need? Sure. So yeah, so you got the GED diploma, you've got the recommendation letters. We need a letter from a doctor stating that you're able to work in the HVAC industry. So what we find is if a student has a relationship with a doctor and, you know, maybe goes for an annual physical, the doctor can literally write a handwritten note. It can even be on an RX pad. There's no form, nothing formal. Um, if a student has, doesn't have a relationship with a doctor, because we have some students that maybe go, you know, once in the start of high school, you know, or years ago when they were back in high school, um, and then they don't maintain a relationship. So for for someone who doesn't have a relationship, it's acceptable to go, you know, like a patient first and, and get a physical done and submit that form to us. So, um, but if you have a relationship with a doctor and they're willing to write a note, you're not required to get a physical, just, you know, submit that um, letter. And then we need them to apply for their apprentice license. So that's done on the Department of Labor's website. We have a link on our application page that they can click on and it'll take them right there. Anyone can apply for an apprentice license. So um, they just need to apply for that and show us a copy of that. So that does take a couple weeks for them to get that copy. So I recommend, you know, people that hear this and say, okay, I'm going to apply, right? You know, the first thing you should do before you even apply, um, you could go to our page and kind of check it out to, to learn more about the program, but work on those recommendation letters, apply for that apprentice license. Um, and then the last thing that we look for is just a copy of their um, license. So if a student doesn't have a license yet, I know for some of our younger applicants, especially with, you know, MBA being closed in COVID, there's been a delay. Um, just let us know that and that's fine. And then, you know, when you do, but it is important for our, our students to have their license because in this trade, you'll, you'll need to eventually you'll have your own truck. So um, we do encourage them to be working on that if they don't have that already. Perfect. So they fill out the application, they have all the documents, they submit everything. What's next? Yep. So um, once they submit it, we'll get it and we'll process it. And then we will send them an email. Um, and what we do is we do interview the students. Um, we do that in the fall. So that's actually the week before classes start. At this time, everyone who applies to our program and submits the required um, documents is accepted. We are not turning people away. So um, we will have an interview slash an orientation session. So where we can talk to the student one-on-one -on -one, um, about items in their folder and documents. And then we do an orientation because we really want students to make sure that they truly understand what they're signing up for. So we hope that through our outreach and our website and, you know, you know, items like this, this interview we're doing now that people truly understand it. But we do do that orientation kind of as like a last, okay, this is what you're committing to. This is how it's going to look, you know, the ins and outs um, right before. And then the next week is when we start our classes. So, um, so they'll hear from us um, by email, as well as we follow up in um, by mail as well. So Adrian, once, you know, somebody's accepted into the program, they've completed all of this process, how do we bring the HCC piece, educational piece, into the apprenticeship? Is, does that happen at, as, that, as part of that process, or is that a separate piece that they need to complete? So it's part of the process, because as Stephanie said, uh, in September, they will begin their formal um, coursework, which is called the Related Instruction. So that's when they'll come to HCC one night a week, and these will be in-person classes, and then they typically will also um, be at the lab one night a week. So, and again, they are in person also. I, I will just make the, the blanket statement that, you know, in the event that uh, COVID uh, changes course or does whatever it's going to do, um, and we are, um, you know, pretty much uh, recommended to go back to a virtual, we do have processes in place to be able to do that. 
Hopefully it's not for a long period, but again, the focus is actually being in person and they are currently in person taking classes right now. So again, the fall, it's not going to be new. It's going to be, this is a continuation of what we've been doing. Um, they've actually been in person uh, the majority of the uh, pandemic and, and HVAC is an essential employee. So they are still working and doing on the job and they have been employed during this entire pandemic. So they are out and about with employers. Absolutely. I know I've had you guys or somebody come and serve as my house at least twice during this pandemic. So um, Adrian, so they don't need to go to HEC's website and or they don't need to come to HEC separately um, to register. All of it is completed as part of the process. We correct um, as as just something that some students do get confused because they think HCC with the apprenticeship. We do have a page on our website on the apprenticeship page regarding HVAC. And what we'll do is we will link um, the hack website back to HCC. So a student can click on it and they'll be directed over to the hackmd.org um, website. We talked about hiring, we talked about different employers. Um, do the students get the opportunity to choose who they wanna work for? Do you guys pair them with somebody? Do they have like an interview process? How, you know, I, I wanna learn a little more about that one piece uh, because I'm sure somebody's asking, okay, so do I come and work with you guys or am I gonna be out with different employers? Uh, and how does that work? Sure. So, um... You know, ultimately what we say, it, it is the student's responsibility to find a job. However, we will assist them. And I always knock on wood. I've never lost a student because we haven't been able to find them um, an op a job opportunity that's the right fit for them. So um, we have a list on our website of our member companies that we always say is a great starting place for our students to start looking. Um, but really, they can work for any HVAC company that's willing to agree to our standards and partner with us. So we have hundreds of companies that have signed agreements with our organization. So what we do is we post on our website, it's on that same apprentice tab that has the application. The fifth drop down menu is students looking for work. So we have the students fill out um, a resume and online form, and we post their resumes there. So just this week, a second reason for my motivation in getting our application out is I got 15 calls between Monday and Tuesday of employers looking for our students. The, the demand for even our students is more than we have. So, um, but what we do is we direct them to that page and then they can go there and they can get the student's name and student's cell phone number or, or home number, whatever the student prefers and see a copy of that student's resume and reach out to them. So. It's kind of a symbiotic process that happens. You know, some students will come to us that they've already reached out to someone and have a relationship or are starting to work. Um, but, but so I would say we kind of tagged team to make sure that, you know, they, they find the right fit. Wow, 15 calls in today, is that, um, that's impressive. So I understand now why you said we're not turning anybody down. I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's a big statement, but now I get why you're so confident in doing that because there is opportunities out there. Yeah. Talking about the right employee, talking about the right fit, right? Who should consider coming and who should consider being part of this apprenticeship program uh, with, you know, this HVAC, specifically the HVAC apprenticeship through Howard Community College and through you guys? What's that ideal candidate? Is there an ideal candidate? I mean, I would say really it's, it's someone who's, who's eager and, and who wants to, is committed to learning, you know? I think people that tend to have an aptitude towards maybe working with their hands. Um, so that, that could be something to have that mechanical aptitude. I think for people who like to be challenged on a regular basis and also kind of be in a position where, you know, your day's changing every day. You know, some people prefer a traditional job where you're sitting at a desk and you know, these are the six tasks that you have to get accomplished every day and you just get them done. A lot of people on the flip side, they don't necessarily need or want that, that much routine. They like waking up every day and not knowing what the day is going to hold. So, you know, you get into your truck and you know, okay, well, I know I'm going to be at the six customers houses, but you don't necessarily know what you're, you're faced with. So I think someone who 
kind of is looking for that type of structure in their day in and day out. Um, and really someone who's just eager and committed to learn because, you know, some of, most of our best students are people coming to us that don't know anything about the trade. I mean, we start with the basics. This is a hammer. This is what it looks like, you know? So, you know, people that, that don't know anything and that are just committed to being responsible, to showing up on time, to wanting to learn, that's, that's really what makes a difference. So, you know, no one should be scared or concerned about getting into this field. You know, we'll give you the tools you need. You just have to be, you know, ready for, for the challenge, for fast pace, you know, ready to, to show up on time and, and be committed to learning. Adrian, is there an ideal candidate for an apprenticeship? You know, because we talked specifically right now about the HVAC apprenticeship and, and what that means, right? But maybe somebody's listening and is like, well, I don't know, um, Stephanie, you just said all those things and I don't know that the HVAC field is necessarily for me, but I kind of like this idea of an apprenticeship. So is there such thing as an ideal candidate for an apprenticeship, Adrian? I think truly an ideal candidate is someone who wants to learn, who wants to have the on-the-job experience, and truly the opportunity to have a career and be paid and have majority of their tuition covered during their experience as an apprentice. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> you know, don't we all want to go to school and have it paid for and, and have that experience come in built into, you know, what I'm studying? I think that that's just an ideal situation. And the students are receiving a wage and a progressive wage during this entire time too. So it is not an unpaid opportunity. This is a paid opportunity where they receive a progressive wage, which as Stephanie referred to is they receive bumps along the way. And it's based on the number of hours and the year that they are. So uh, again, you're going to start out at one level, but as you have that on the job experience and the hours under your belt, those wages are going to increase. Since I learned about the apprenticeships, I'm like, I love this whole idea. I hold this, I love the system of how they work. And, and to me, it's the ideal situation for, for learning, for studying, for growing, for building your career. And I, I really do hope that we can expand it more and more, you know, to different fields. And, and Stephanie, actually, I want you to talk to employers. I want you to talk to those who might be listening and watching today. And they're like, okay, I have a business. I, you know, I... I see, I, I hear you, I'm not sure yet, right? And I, it might be worth considering. I'd love for you to talk to them and, and just encourage them to maybe explore this idea of offering an apprenticeship, you know, just, just tell them why they should consider um, contacting Adrian and her office and, and just explore the idea and see if this is a right fit, if this is a good fit for them, um, you know, like some of those advantages, those benefits that it means for an employer to offer this kind of opportunity for students. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think for the employer, what makes this appealing and, and why they should consider apprentice students is that they have a person who has decided that they want to make a career in this industry. This person has gone through the process of applying for this program, starting this program, starting the training, um, and, and basically, you know, and really committing to the field. So even if they um, are green in the industry because they're just learning, they are committed. They know that this is what they want. They, they have gone through the process of applying and starting the program. Um, and, and honestly, because the industry is in such need of people, I think a lot of um, owners and managers out there just want to hear that someone is reliable enough to come to work every day and respond and be responsible, you know, sometimes that's all they need to hear. So for all those contractors out there, you know, we've got these able body, we have 270 students in our program. Um, almost all of them are currently working, but we do have a handful that are still looking. Um, these are candidates that are learning the trade, that are having a chance to work in our labs and experiment. So it doesn't happen on your customer site and who will show up for you every day on time and, you know, eager to put, put in the time and the effort. I, I love that you said it's even like a safety net, you know, <laughs> you're, yes, you're taking a risk, but we're taking it with you. You're not alone in this and you're building this uh, workforce of prepared individuals, committed individuals who yeah. love what they're doing, want to make a career out of it and, and 
I mean, that's really the perfect uh, employee, in my opinion. Adrian, where can people get in touch with you? Where can we find more information if you're, you know, for employers, for people who are looking to change their careers, students, where can we connect with you? Absolutely. The website is www.howardcc.edu forward slash apprenticeship. So that is where all of our apprenticeship uh, occupations are located, including the HVAC tab. Once you click on the HVAC tab, there's other information that is there. Um, and again, if there is someone that uh, is very interested in this, maybe has very limited work experience to know a work experience, and they've never put together a resume. So feel free to reach out to us at the apprenticeship team, and we can navigate you through some resources at Howard Community College. And you can contact us at apprentice, A-P-P-R-E-N-T-I-C-E, -E, at howardcc.edu. We can direct you to the Career Center. They can provide some tips and even some reviews on putting together a resume. And they can also assist with some interviewing tips for when you are interviewing with the employers. So that's the best way to, to get more information. Um, we look forward to assisting you both from a student side and the employer side, and we can facilitate and direct you over to Stephanie and her team at Hack. Thank you both. I mean, you know, the opportunity to learn, the opportunity to get that experience, to get paid, right? To maybe have your education paid for it as well. But not only that, you just talked about accessing the resources, Adrian, of, um, you know, if you don't have a resume, you know, HCC can support you with that. We can help you with that. Stephanie, you talked about the confidence, right? Just building that confidence so that when you have a job, you can sit behind that truck and feel ready right for your day feel ready feel feel good that you know what you need to do that you know what's you don't know what's coming your way as you said but you're going to be able to tackle it and, and and figure out what to do i mean just all of that right which education brings but to me this is just that extra level right these apprenticeships opportunities just take you one level ahead because um of that experience of that hands-on experience that mm -hmm. schools don't always provide uh, in the classroom Anything else that you guys would like to add before we wrap our conversation up this morning? No, just, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, to meet our, our next group of students and um, on our website, you know, I'm always available. Um, I am the only staff. So when you call the phone number, or email, any of the emails on the website, everything comes to me. So, um, you know, happy to have another conversation um, if there's, there's more questions that you have and and just excited to, to meet our next, our next class. Let's remind everybody where they can contact you, Stephanie. Sure. So um, our website is www.haccmd.org. Um, and our office number is 410-431-8889. I wanna thank you both so much for your time. I wanna thank you both for creating this opportunity. Um, Stephanie, for partnering with Howard Community College and Adrian for building this program and continue to grow it. I, I think it's a beautiful opportunity for brand new you know, graduate students who wanna go into a trade um, for career changers for I mean, stay at home moms. I love Stephanie that you also said, you know, we need women. We want women to get, you know, these are careers that traditionally we don't think of as, you know, for female, but here we are and we're saying, yes, if this is something that you're excited about and you're female, by all means, come, we have the money. You know, we heard it first here. There's grant money there waiting for you. Um, we also heard April 5th is the day when you want to start, but there's two things that you can start doing after we finish this conversation today recommendation letters, right? And then also applying for that apprenticeship license. So those are two things you can start doing today. Um, if you have questions, you can contact Stephanie, you can contact Adrian, and, you know, go to howardcc.edu uh, website. There's a search bar there. You can just click on, and you can just type there, apprenticeship, and that will take you and bring you all the information. And you will see that HBIC is just one of the opportunities that we offer. We have many other opportunities for you right there, and we're here to help you. 
Thank you both so, so, so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. And thank you everybody for listening and for watching. Share this information um, you know, with friends, with family, maybe somebody you know is interested in, in, in diving into the world of HVAC and this might be the right opportunity for them. So mm -hmm. have a wonderful day. And until next time, I am Cris Oviedo. <laughs>